Fermat's last theory in the triangle. Fermat was a judge in France in the 17th century who did love numbers, and it seems that he also loved triangles. This is the formula of his famous last theorem, which states that a to the power of n plus b to the power of n equals c to the power of n. The theorem says that this formula can have a, cannot have a solution if a, b, c, and n are all integers, and if n is larger than 2. It took over 300 years until the theorem actually has proven correct by two mathematicians, Wiley and Taylor, about 20 years ago. Wiley and Taylor also showed that Fermat's formula could not have a solution if a, b, c, and n are rational numbers. Three numbers form a triangle if the sum of the two smaller ones is larger than the largest of them. In Fermat's formula, this must be the case, which you can easily see from example. If you let a be 1, b be 2, c be 3, and n be 2, you get for, for a squared 1, for b squared 4, and for c squared 9. Thus, a plus b must be much larger than c for Fermat's formula to work. Here is our Fermat triangle ABC in which side C must be the longest side. The shape of the triangle is determined by the ratio between the three numbers that form the sides. Each side can represent any number. However, if a value is assigned to one of the sides, the other two sides must assume values that preserve the ratio between the three sides. Thus, if one side is multiplied or divided by a number, the other two sides must be multiplied or divided by the same number. If sides A, B, C represent rational numbers, each one of them can be divided by any rational number into sections of equal length. Side A can be divided into A segments of equal length, side B into B segments, and side C into C segments of equal length. Each of these segments represents the unit value of 1. The size of this unit value 1 for side A is 1 over A. For side B it is 1 over B, and for side C it is 1 over C. All three of these units are of the same length. If we multiply 1 over A, unit 1, with A, we obtain the reference value 1 a over a. Side b will then b over a, and side c will become c over a, which means that we are using side a as the reference side that can be used to measure the lengths of the other two sides. We can do the same with sides b and c. Thus, we have two different values for one, the unit value one, which is 1 over a, or b over c, and the reference value 1, which is a over a, or b over b, or c over c. One of these values is common to all rational numbers. The other one is unique for each individual numbers. All numbers larger than 1 are multiples of unit value 1, and all numbers smaller than 1 are fractions of the reference value 1. The length of unit 1 determines the size of the triangle ABC. When I drew the triangle ABC, I made side A 7 cm, side B 8 cm, and side C 10 cm long. My unit 1 was 1 cm. By this, I have determined the size of the original triangle. On your screen, the same triangle will have a different size because it is very unlikely that one centimeter in the original is still one centimeter on your screen. If unit one would be one kilometer, our triangle would become very large. And if unit one would be one nanometer, the triangle would be invisibly small. If we make side A the reference side, 7 centimeter will become the size of our new unit 1 of reference, which we may call a Simpson. 
Now side A is one Simpson long, side B is eight over seven Simpsons, and side C is 10 over seven Simpson. What happens if one of the sides is irrational? Irrational numbers cannot be divided by rational numbers into subunits of equal size. One of the most famous irrational number is the number pi. Pi represents the length of a circle with a diameter one. The unit 1 for pi has the size of 1 over pi, which is not compatible with the unit 1 of the diameter of the circle. If we use a circle as a reference value of instead, of, instead of the diameter, the diameter will have the length of 1 over pi. Now the diameter is irrational and the circle is rational. For example, we can make a perfect circle by using a string of exactly 1 meter. The diameter of this circle will then be 1 over pi meters, which is irrational and cannot be expressed in any fraction of a meter. This means, in short, we cannot determine the exact length of an arc by using a straight line as a reference and the reverse. Now, let side B of our triangle assume the irrational value of pi. The unit value 1 for side B now is 1 over pi, which has a different size from unit values 1 over A of side A and 1 over C of side C. If side B is used as a reference value, side A and side C become the values A over pi and C over pi. As A and C cannot be divided into equal segments by number pi, Numbers a over pi and numbers b over pi are irrational. Thus, if side b is used as a reference side, only side b can be a multiple or a fraction of 1. Back to our Fermat theorem. As in triangle ABC, each side can assume any numerical value. We can assign the value c to the power of n to the side c by first dividing all three sides of the triangle by c, and then by multiplying them by c to the power of n. Now side c has the value c to the power of n, side a has the value a times c to the power of n minus 1, and b the value b times c to the power of n minus 1. If rational, all of these numbers are multiples or fractions of the number 1, and each one of them can be used as a reference value for each other. Now we substitute value a to the power of n plus b to the power of n for c to the power of n by again dividing all sides by c and then multiplying by a to the power of n plus b to the power of n. The result is a to the power of n plus b to the power of n for side c. And a over c times a to the power of n plus b to the power of n for side a. And b over c times a to the power of n plus b to the power of n for side b. Or, which is the same, a times a to the power of n over c plus b to the power of n over c in brackets for side a. The expression a to the power of n over c plus b to the power of n over c must be the same as c to the power of n minus 1, which in turn must be equal to a to the power of n minus 1 plus b to the power of n minus 1. And that is only possible if c equals 1. a and b must be smaller than 1. They are no integers. They cannot assume the value 1 because side c would then be larger than 1, which means Fermat's formula could not have a solution at all. Thus, under the condition of Fermat's formula, sides a and b cannot be multiples or fractions of number 1. Therefore, if Fermat's formula has a solution, at least one of the sides of the triangles must be irrational like side b was in our example with the number pi. Fermat's last theorem should be true for all n. 
However, there is a solution with integers of n equals, if n equals 2 in the right angle triangle. A right angle triangle can be divided by its altitude into two triangles, ADC and DBC. Both of these triangles are smaller versions of the mother triangle ABC. Sides A and B are the longest side of the daughter triangles. They represent side C of these triangles. Thus, all sides of a right angle triangle can assume the value a to the power of n plus b to the power of n equals 1. That means the three sides share a common unit 1 and they are rational. But why can n only be 2? If we call the longest line of the triangle C and set C equal to 1, all possible triangles fit into the area delineated by the two arcs centered on A and B with the radii C in the figure. The area under the semicircle over C with the radius 1 half contains all obtuse triangles in which angle gamma is larger than 90 degree. The tips of all right angle triangles are located on the semicircle over I a b the area outlined by the arcs a c max and c max b and the semicircle over a b contains the tips of all acute triangles in which angle gamma is between 60 degrees and 90 degrees the center line d c max is the geometric location of the tips of all isosceles triangles. At C max is the tip of the equilateral triangle with the sides of the lengths of 1, which satisfied the equation a to the power of n plus b to the power of n equals 2. C2 is the tip of the isosceles triangles that satisfies the equation a to the power of 2 plus b to the power of 2 equals c to the power of 2 equals 1. C3 is the tip of the isosceles triangles that satisfies a to the power of 3 plus b to the power of 3 equals c to the power of 3 equals 1. The sides a and b of these triangles are between 0.793 and 0.794. According to the theorem, its exact length cannot be determined with rational numbers. C4 is the tip of the isosceles triangle that satisfied a to the power 4 plus b to the power 4 equals c to the power 4 equals 1. The sides a and b of this triangle is the irrational number between 0.84 and 0.841. For each n there must be one point on the center line that represents the location of cn of the isosceles triangle representing a to the power of n plus b to the power of n equals 1. All obtuse triangles have their tips inside of the semicircle AC2B, in which numbers a to the power of n plus b to the power of n is smaller than 1. Thus, for much formula can only be true in acute triangles in which side C is the longest side. The interrupted lines in this figure are hypothetical curves of the geometric locations of the tips of all triangles that satisfy Fermat's equation for n equals 3 and n equals 4. For each n must exist one of these curves. The tangents to these curves at points A and B should be perpendicular to the line AB and the tangent at point CN should be parallel to AB. Thus, these curves most likely are elliptical. Well, that was it. I thank all of you who had been patient enough to bear with me all the way to here. Yours, Wolf Krebs.